Let's look at the interesting question you might frequently see on the test. Determine the missing part. And you're presented with five hexagons that contains different types of arrows inside. And one arrow is missing. And you have four different choices presented at the bottom of the screen. Choice A, B, C, and D. Do you see the right fit for the missing part on the top? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to think through this and see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Let me explain to you how you can come up with the solution on your own. What we see here is three types of arrows. We see arrow with the straight body, another arrow with the curved body, and then we also see arrow with two arrow heads. As usual, my recommendation is always look for patterns. You see that the numbers 1, 3, and 5 are straight arrows. And then we have a pattern for curved arrows. You see that the shape 2 and 4 contain curved arrows. And then you also see that the pattern of straight arrows going down in the first and in the fifth shape. Now, knowing the patterns, you can determine that the missing arrow is curved. But as you can see, there are at least two curved arrows. And typically, the patterns on the test is symmetricity. So the arrow in choice C is not symmetrical to the arrow in the shape 2. This is why the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question, or in case you didn't, now you would know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the interesting question, which tests your visualization as well as analytical skills. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you have a sequence of four by five rectangles, and each rectangle contains a pie inside of the rectangle. The figure four is missing, and there are four different choices for you to select from. Choice A, B, C, and D. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice is always the same. Always look for patterns. And here the pattern is symmetricity. You see if we draw a line in the middle, you can see that the shapes, the pie pieces, are symmetrical. You see the pie in the first square, which mirrors the pie in the last square. Because the pies in the second and third squares are also mirrored. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your pattern recognition as well as logical reasoning skills. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you're presented with rectangle, which has multiple squares. And one of the squares is missing. It has a question mark inside. And you have four different choices. A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. There are a couple tricky parts about this question. Number one is the general flow of squares, and then there is a sequence of arrows inside the squares. For example, we're starting the flow right here, not in the corner. It's kind of in the middle of the upper row, and then you need to follow the red arrows for the general order. The arrows inside the squares rotating clockwise. And what you can see is the arrowhead for that smaller arrow always points to where it was located in the previous box. So the correct answer here is choice A. I truly hope that you've nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. But in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my... Let me share with you an interesting question which tests your reasoning skills. Determine which of the following is missing and you're presented with the large square which could be logically broken into three by three small squares and four different choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. You have a missing square in the bottom left corner. Do you think you can figure out the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can figure out the solution. Do you have the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this puzzle and get to the correct solution together. 
we presented was the very interesting challenge here. But challenge could be broken down into two patterns. The first pattern is the flow of small squares around the middle. And the second pattern is the flow of triangles inside the small squares. Pattern 1 rotates clockwise and starts in the upper left corner. You see that the pattern rotates around the cent clock, which is in the middle, and cent clock does not participate in the pattern. And pattern 2 is determined based on where triangle touches the lines of the small square. For example, the triangle in the upper left corner touches the lines of the small square in the center you see on the top, as well as down at the bottom. Next one touches on the left and down. The following one touches in the up and also in the center. And you can continue this pattern to determine the missing item, which is choice B. It was a tricky question, but I hope by now you know what to look for and how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. And now, here's the question for you to try to solve on your own. If you come up with the answer, please make sure to post it in the comments. Here's the question. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you presented with four different shapes. And shape number four is missing. You have four different choices to determine the next shape. Do you see the answer? One tip for you. Always look for patterns. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comment section of this video. Also, please make sure to include your rationale on how you solved this challenge and I'll give you my feedback. I'm also planning to post the detailed answer to this and other challenge questions in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to solve similar challenges on the test. Thanks for participating and good luck solving this challenge. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your pattern recognition and visual reasoning skills. Which of the following completes missing parts of the square? And you present it with the 4x4 four four square, which contains different smaller squares inside, and four possible choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. Do you recognize the pattern? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Interesting question, isn't it? But as usual, look for patterns. If you look closely, you will see that the middle box right in the center of the larger square is symmetrical. So the L shape at the bottom and then another shape in the upper right corner, they represent symmetricity for this middle square, which consists of the four small squares. Couple important considerations when answering this question. Two white boxes designed to confuse you. Lower left part of the larger square only has three white spaces in the form of L shape. Similar symmetrical pattern follows in the upper right corner. This is why the missing part consists of the shaded part which completes the square in the center. So the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the question for you to practice your skills and what you have learned so far. Here's the question. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You are presented with the sequence of four different squares. Each square contains smaller shapes inside, with the exception of square four, which is marked with the question mark. You have four possible choices to answer this question. Choices A, B, C, and D. Please give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comment section of this video. Also, please post your rationale in the comments so I can give you my feedback. I'm also planning to post the detailed answer to this question in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn more about the answer and how to solve similar challenges on the test. Thanks for participating and good luck. Let me share with you a tricky question from the test. Somehow, though, I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. Which of the following completes the missing part of the square? And you have 3 by 3 square, which consists of the smaller squares. 
Each small square has a star, and all stars are in the different corners. One small square is missing, and you have four different choices to figure out the final answer. Choices A, B, C, and D. Each choice has a star in a different corner. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's go ahead and jump straight to the solution. As usual, the best advice I can give you is always look for patterns. So there are multiple patterns going on. Let's look at each one of them. The first pattern is that the top and the bottom rows follow the similar patterns. You see the location of the stars for the top row, they are in the top, and for the bottom row, the stars are at the bottom part of the bottom row. If you follow the middle row, you will see that the stars in the middle row follow a completely different pattern. The first middle row star is at the top, then bottom, then the next one logically would be at the top again. You also see that the middle row stars are placed on the opposite sides of the top and bottom row stars. You see in the first column, the middle row stars in the upper right corner versus the top and the bottom rows which are placed on the left side. Same thing happens in the middle column and then assuming that we figured out the pattern, you will see that the same pattern will be applicable in the right column as well. This is why the missing star is placed on the opposite side of the stars in the top and bottom rows. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. The stars inside the box follow the pattern. Top and bottom row follow similar patterns and pattern in the middle row is very different. Notice that the first row and the last row stars are placed in the upper and left sections. Middle row stars though are positioned on the opposite side of the stars placed in other rows. Middle row stars also follow a pattern of upper, lower and then upper. Therefore, the missing star is placed on the opposite side of the star in the first and last row at the upper left corner. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question, and in case you didn't, you know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let me share with you a tricky question from the test. I have confidence, though, that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. What figure can be visualized upon combining the two rectangles? And you have two rectangles on the left. Both of the rectangles are 7 by 3, and you have four different choices. Choice A, graph. Choice B, shape. Choice C, letter. And choice D, number. Do you see the answer? See if you can pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct answer together. Let me explain to you how you can come up with the solution on your own. Upon merging of two rectangles, you can see that 8 can be visualized, and 8 is the number. So the correct answer is choice D, number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the question from the test you can try to solve on your own. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You are presented with the sequence of 5 squares, and square number 4 is missing. You also have four different choices to answer this question. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you think you know the answer? One tip for you here, always look for patterns. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comment section of this video and please provide the answer as well as the rationale. I will also post the detailed answer to this question in my future videos. So please make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to come up with the answers to similar questions on the test. Thanks for participating and good luck! Let's look at the interesting question which tests your pattern recognition skills. Determine the missing shapes inside the figure to complete the sequence. And you present it with 2 by 2 figure. It has two missing shapes and you have four possible choices, A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. As usual, to solve these types of problems on the test, you need to look for patterns. 
and there are two patterns here presented. Number one is the diamond pattern in the middle, and number two is the pattern of shapes on the outside of the smaller squares, which are unique. Outside shapes corners are always aligned with the corner of the smaller square as well. The two missing shapes also have similarities with other shapes present in the box. Upon combining, all triangles in the center form a diamond shape. Let's look at each one of these two patterns in more details. You should look for the triangle which matches the color, and upon combining, it should build a diamond. For pattern 2, the missing shape in the upper right corner should complement the shapes with the corners that can be exactly placed in the box. In this case, we selected green rectangle. You also notice that there is a pattern of green color on the opposite side of the squares, same as the purple colors on the opposite sides of other squares. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Let's look at the tricky question, which tests your knowledge of reasoning as well as the math skills. Here's the question. By analyzing the figure using a mathematical operation, how many stars should be present in the missing part of the circle? And you have a circle broken down into four equal parts. Three parts of the circle already have stars, and they have one, two, and then three stars. And you have four different choices. Choice A, two, choice B, three, choice C, four, and choice D, five. So can you determine how many stars should blank part of the circle have? Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see if we can come up with the solution together. As usual, to answer any type of question, look for patterns. And here, the pattern is symmetricity. So if you draw the line in the middle of the circle from top to bottom, you will see that you need to come up with the answer that would be symmetrical. There are multiple ways to solve this challenge, and we got a hint that we should use mathematical operation. We take the star from the left of the blank part of the square and add number of stars from the right part of the blank square, and we get 1 plus 2, which is equal 3. You can also use subtraction to come up with the answer. Can you figure out how to use subtraction to get to the similar answer? If you figure out the subtraction answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. And here is the question you can try to solve on your own. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You are presented with four different squares, and each square has another figure inside. And there are four possible choices, A, B, C, and D. Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. One tip for you, always look for patterns. If you figured out the answer, feel free to post the answer in the comment section of this video. Also, please make sure to post your rationale so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck on this challenge! Here's an interesting question from the real test. I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. Choose which of the following comes next in the sequence, and you're presented with the sequence of objects. Take a close look at the sequence and try to determine which one of the choices A, B, C, or D comes next in the sequence. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. When we look at the original items presented in the sequence, you see that the green circle presented in every box. Another pattern that we see here is that items are added incrementally. For example, first square contains two objects, one of which is green circle. Second square contains green circle and triangle and square. In the third box, you see that all original items are present and we have an additional yellow diamond. So we can assume safely that the item that we will pick should have a green circle in the bottom left corner, and it should have five items, and it should contain all original items present in the first three squares. This leads us to the correct answer in the choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to look for the patterns in the test. But in case you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video.
Here is the question from the real test. Some of you might find this question tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve this or not on your own, you will be excited to learn the solution to this real life assessment test question. What word can you form using all the letters in the box? And you're presented with nine letters on the left. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, there are many words that can be formed with the given letters. But the best word and the correct word would be the one that contains all the letters. To answer this question, you need to think of the sequence. Start with the corners and explore possible answers. For example, if you start in the bottom right corner, you can follow the word nutrition and U-T-R-I-T-I-O-N. And that's the correct answer to this question. Hopefully you've nailed it and now know how to answer these types of questions in the test. Here's the tricky question from the real test, but somehow I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer on your own. Which of the following is formed when the shaded parts of the blocks are combined? And you have four different choices. Choice A, number. Choice B, shape. Choice C, letter. And choice D, chart. On, on the left, you're presented with two blocks. There are two four by five blocks, and each block has white and shaded circles. See if you can come up with the answer and determine what happens when all these blocks are combined. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge together. The best way to solve these types of questions is to imagine a new block and understand what is formed when all the shaded circles are merged together from two original blocks. And upon merging, you will see that the heart is formed, which is represented here in the third block. And heart is a shape, so the correct answer here is choice B, shape. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the tricky question, but I have full confidence that you will come up with the solution. Which of the following squares is different from the others? And you're presented with four different choices four different three by three squares choices a b c and d do you see the answer my tip here is always look for patterns and if you have figured out the answer make sure to post it in the comment section of this video thanks for participating and good luck solving this challenge here is the question from the real test but somehow i have a feeling that you might come up with the answer what can you visualize by merging both squares? You're presented with five by five squares on the left. And you have four different choices to answer this question. Choice A, shape. Choice B, letter. Choice C, number. And choice D, chart. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Before jumping to the solution, let me give you a couple tips. If you have access, please, please use the paper or whiteboard to draw this shape and see what can you come up in the final figure. This is necessary because our brain, at least mine, is not very well designed to visualize particular figures. So maybe you are different or maybe you know better solutions. In this case, if you have ability to visualize, you're very lucky because most of the people don't have this ability. They should be using paper or whiteboard to get to the certain answer. Another tip here is look out for trick parts that might be included into the final shape upon merging and they're created by test providers to confuse you. As you can see, upon merging both squares in the top, you see the final square at the bottom and you see that there is a square in the middle as well as two shaded small squares in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice A, shape, because square is the shape. But make sure to use those tips I shared with you earlier to increase your chances of answering these types of questions correctly on the test. And now, here's the question from the real test you can try to solve on your own. 
I have full confidence, though, that you can solve this challenge. Which of the following is different from the other shapes? And you're presented with four different rounded squares. Each one has a shape inside. So do you see the answer? Can you figure out which one is different? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. And also, my tip to you, always look for patterns. And if you have figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comment section of this video, as well as your rationale on how to solve it. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating, and good luck solving this challenge. This question is quite tricky, but I would like to show you the solution so we can solve this interesting and tricky question together. Which shape does not belong to the group? and you have four choices of shapes. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue and see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. In this case, shapes can be grouped by number of sides in the shape. For example, you see that all the shapes in the left have six sides. If you count the sides, for example, in this shape, you will see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six. Same with the hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six. And same with the arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the correct answer here is choice A for the pentagon, which only has five sides, one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully you've nailed this question and answered it correctly. And now know how to answer similar questions and problems on the test. All right, this question is very interesting and tricky, and you might frequently see these types of questions on the test. But in this case, I'm going to show you the solution, and I truly hope that upon learning, you would know how to solve these questions in the test. Here's the question. The rectangle has shaded and unshaded parts. What type of figure can you visualize when you merge two rectangles? You have two rectangles on the left. They have shaded and unshaded parts, represented by white circles and black circles and you have four possible choices. Choice A, graph. Choice B, chart. Choice C, shape. And choice D, number. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue. Please give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this question and get to the correct solution together. What you see here is that upon combining, you can imagine the hexagon because hexagon is the shape in the bottom rectangle. And because hexagon is the shape, the correct answer here is choice C. The trick here is try to visualize it in your head, which is quite hard. But in case you have access to papers or whiteboard, try to take advantage of this and maybe verify your answer using those tools. Let's recap. By combining unshaded parts of both figures, a hexagon can be visualized, and hexagon is the shape. So the correct answer here is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up this tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.